Tommy, great to see you. How, how are you. how are you feeling off the back of the weekend, first of all? I, I see the eyes come up nice. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, no, it was, it was a good game. Um, good to get the result. Pretty happy with how I went, um, personally. But from a team point of view, it's definitely a step in the right direction. There's obviously a few things to, to um, go and patch up, but no, no, no. It was, it was a good result. Can we talk about the eye? We can. Because that was friendly fire. It was, yeah. Bottom of a ruck. I think Freddie's knee just caught it. Um, but yeah, no. All good. Yeah, no break, so fine. A any sympathy? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was noticeable, I think, for everybody that you, you were roaming, you were hunting the ball. You've obviously been given licence to go searching searching for action. Is that is that kind of how you see yourself in this side? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, the, the fundamentals of, of my role of getting the ball back in that aerial contest is massive for us. Um, but no, outside of that, um, when, when we put the ball in face shape, it's I want to be getting my hands on the ball as much as I can. Um, and doing that off these ball players like uh, Fordy and Slady and boys like that, um, they'll, they, they'll put me in some good spots. Do you feel that this is a time that you kind of are looking to seize? It sounds like a stupid question maybe, but off the back of what happened in your first incarnation with England, Eddie Jones, etc., etc., are you kind of that much more hungry to make sure it counts? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I, my debut in Australia and things like that, obviously that was an unbelievable memory, unbelievable time, um, and I'll cherish that forever. Um, and obviously South Africa wasn't, wasn't the best experience for me at Twickenham. Um, but no, I think at that age, obviously being a bit younger as well, um, I was probably sat on the fringes a bit, um, probably thinking I was the young kid, just trying to take over every opportunity I can, but now I just want to make, make a big difference in the team and, and definitely keep my foot in it and keep playing week in, week out. There's a huge difference, isn't there, between being happy to be selected and influencing matches, winning matches? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, like I said, being that young kid, you, all you want to do is just lap it all up. You want to obviously play well, do your part for the team, um, but, but your head's obviously all over the places when, you, when you're young and you haven't got, got many, many appearances. But no, definitely, I think... Now going forward, having a very clear mindset of how we want to move forward as a team um, has definitely definitely helped that. How much has it helped you as well being surrounded by so many of your, your Saints boys? Has that been a kind of settling factor? Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, I think outside off the pitch kind of stuff is also is really nice. I'm trying to keep away from them as much as possible, to be honest, because <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to create new connections, obviously. Um, but no, it is, it's, it's lovely having everyone around and, and familiar faces and things like that, so yeah. And it's important that you've all been picked well, bang in form, seems to me, particularly with, with a back division, particularly with a winger. You're playing brilliantly for Saints, you're scoring tries by the hatful. How much does it matter to you to be, to be picked at a moment where you, you feel on fire? I just think it, sh it shows you that what they're, what they're looking for from obviously a management team in, in England. If you play well for your club and you, you're performing as a club, I think it's definitely going to help you with chances of getting selected. Um, which is, which is massive, and to see as many lads as there are here today it, it is awesome. You mentioned the fact you're trying to steer a little bit clearer of them on occasions. Um, what, what's the, what, what goes on in camp between the Saints boys? Tell, tell me what the Saints boys are up to. Oh, normally we're just tearing each other limb from limb, to be honest, but um, <laughs> no, um, I think there's, there's, there's loads, obviously. There's, there's good conversations, good rugby conversations, and then there's obviously the fun, kind of off-field off stuff that we're, that we're talking about, obviously in spas and and kind of getting together as much as we can, as well as obviously the other lads are kind of trying to come into that group as well. There was a little bit of a, a moment, wasn't there, in Rome, um, Tommy, with the with with the shorts? Can, can we discuss the cheeks? I mean, have you come up, come on for much stake for that? Yeah, apparently, <laughs> well, Steve said today that he had a nice conversation with my mum about that post game. So, yeah, that was always good. Um, no, look. <laughs> Young, I couldn't control it, obviously. I think, yes, I felt very vulnerable at the time. <laughs> but no, I think these things happen and uh, maybe a bit of tan in the future. <laughs> <laughs> 65,000 people, Stadio Olimpico. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it there, right? Yeah, that's, that's the way, yeah. Drawstring, I'm thinking. Oh, I probably had about three layers on as well. I had tight skins. I don't know how he's done it, um, but fair play to him. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Excellent. Um, what about the weekend? Obviously, Wales um, had an extraordinary game last weekend. Um, I, I want to particularly zone in on another Tommy, um, Tommy Raphael, who's just been amazing for, for the Tigers and for, and for Wales. I'm just thinking of the, the tale of the two Tommies on the weekend. How, how do you see it? Um, yeah, well, we've, we've definitely mentioned his name a lot around camp, um, prepping for this game. He's going to be someone we're going to 
try and keep off our ball because we know he's a, a threat around that breakdown area. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be obviously England Wales. It's it's a massive occasion um, at our home ground. We want it to be a tough place to come, and um, yeah, we'll make sure we we don't make it easy because we know we'll, they'll keep coming. They'll know they won't give up like you saw at the Scotland game. Um, so yeah, we'll have to keep that in mind. Did did he, did he watch that game with? Um Curious interest on account of the fact that at half time you're probably thinking, okay, this should be quite fun next week, and then by the end you're thinking, maybe not. Oh, it's Test rugby. You can never, you can never know for sure. Um, obviously, a bit unexpected to be honest. Um, but no, every team's going to fight till till the last minute. And like you saw Italy do the same against us, and we we would do the same against any other team. So yeah, no, wasn't wasn't looking too much into it. And there's a lot of talk around kind of reconnecting this team with the public. So first time in this Six Nations in the in uh, the home of English rugby at Twickenham. Sorry, um, how, how important is it for you to kind of get people up off their chairs? Yeah, I think it's massive. I think we've said we want to take the crowd with us. Um, we want to obviously make it a horrible place for oppositions to come and um, and and we can kind of create that environment with our fans. But also in in our favour, we want to bring them on the journey we're going on. We want to make them proud of us. Make them kind of look at us and, and see an England performance and the way we're kind of going about our business. And yeah, if we can if we can bring them on that journey, it, it'll be brilliant. Um, a couple of other things just to, to touch on, Tommy, if I can. Um, big news this week, obviously, about Lewis Ludlam and Northampton. Just just tell us uh, what kind of a guy he is, what kind of a player he is, what kind of a captain he is and, and what, what Saints will, like, I suppose, be losing. Yeah, so, yeah, Lud's for me, he's a definite... One, like he's got a big heart. He's a he's a guy that will lead from the front. He's um, just the way he carries himself, the way he is about the business. He's a he's a doer. Um, he he does talk, but he, he he shows in his actions what he's about. Um, and I think it'll be a massive loss for us um, having that character kind of going going elsewhere. And and yeah, it'll be definitely a, a big a big space to fill. Um, but now he's a he's an he's an unbelievable player. He's a good guy, and uh, he will be missed. He's been a big inspiration to a lot of people in that club, hasn't he? And not least because the way he's kind of burst into international contention quite late on, a bit of a bolter, wasn't he, for the World Cup, you know, a couple of World Cups ago. And, and now he's just grown into such an important figure. Yeah, definitely. And I think you see that from, from fans' reactions um, as well. The way they kind of talk about lads in the club around it. He's been at the club for years and years and the lads will say they've kind of... you wouldn't, well, for me as well, I haven't known any other team that, that hasn't been around w without Luds. So, um, yeah, it'll be definitely a space, space we'll miss. Um, you're an epileptic, I've read. I am, yeah. How hard is that for you to kind of manage and does it have any rugby ramifications? Um, yeah, managing, no, not too hard. Um, it's just tablets twice a day. Um, so in terms of that, no, it's all good. Uh, originally, when it all kicked off and, and I found out and I had the big, big seizure, I think, that was the hardest part. I think my my parents were obviously wouldn't would thought this was the end of the road. There was no more rugby, um, and for me as well, I was, it was just the unknown to be honest. Um, so yeah, I think to start with, it was probably hard to come to terms with it. I was probably in a bit of denial um, to start with, um, but no, as it, it's easily managed, it's under control now. And and to be honest, I, f I forget I have it to be honest sometimes. Well, so. That's great. Um, that's exactly. good to hear. But it's also amazing, isn't it, when we're so concerned about people's heads and neurological damage or whatever that you can play it's totally managed and as long as people know that you're an epileptic everything is fine is that the case yeah exactly that I think all staff on board and uh, ambulance crew whoever's there will always know and have, have something with them if if anything does happen um, I've only ever had one um, touch with it stays that way um, but no all under control and, and happy to to crack on brilliant